coming up on Harvest. Once upon a time, he wrote jingles for well-known companies. Today's singer and songwriter John Guerra sings about the good news in his new release, Little Songs. And have you ever wondered what this world would be like without the Holy Spirit? Pastor Mark Lance reveals the purpose and the power of God's Spirit. And Brian Bush has an update on news coming out of the Middle East. What do you have for us, Brian? Well, thank you very much. Good morning, everyone from Jerusalem. I'm going to be here a little bit later on in the show to keep you up to date on what's happening in the Iraqi city of Ramadi, which is now under the full control of Islamic State. So you don't want to go anywhere. The Harvest Show is beginning right now. Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us here today on The Harvest Show. Whether you are in Middle America or the Middle East, like Brian Bush, we're so glad you've decided to meet with us for a full hour of inspiration, revelation, information, you name it. Name it. We have it here on The Harvest Show. And we also have Pete and Steven back mm -hmm. on the set. You had um, a successful or productive trip to we Dallas? A very productive yeah. trip to Dallas. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we accomplished a lot. Yeah. And uh, uh, arrived alive back home. So uh, <laughs> it was all good. And yes. it was uh, for Feed the Hungry. Yeah, yes. for Feed the Hungry. Mm -hmm. And talking about how we can expand the ministry and, and reach more people and be more productive. Mm -hmm. Yep. And it's important to kind of make those That's planning right. sessions mm -hmm. and uh, kind of plan your steps and how you're going to get there, mm -hmm. going from A to B all the way through God's plan and get to do this on a regular basis. Usually it's up here in South mm -hmm. Bend, but uh, this opportunity rose to go to meet our friends down in Dallas, and so we took it. Yep. Well, Hope, Pete, you sent a very interesting story about a motion that um, the president may, I don't know if he's done so, or if he's going to do so, this motion that he's going to submit to the United Nations um, that would basically make Palestine, uh, recognize Palestine as a state. There's been a lot of speculation about what the United States may or may not do okay. uh, regarding Israel in the United Nations. And uh, it's unfortunate that these things keep coming up because eventually it's going to be true. Mm -hmm. uh, one scenario is that someone would present a, a motion to recognize a Palestinian state without any negotiations with Israel mm -hmm. based on the 1947 borders, uh, and uh, which would include then dividing Jerusalem and putting uh, uh, the old city of Jerusalem and all of the historic uh, religious areas uh, uh, within the Palestinian state. Uh, and the United States would just not uh, veto something like that. Then this article comes out that says that possibly the United States is going to themselves, ourselves, enter the proposal into mm -hmm. the United Nations to create the Palestinian state again without negotiations. And mm -hmm. uh, this is so wrong, it's not funny. Yeah. Uh, this is absolutely wrong. And our government has to stand with Israel. Our government cannot be... Uh, doing this sort of thing, and the only way there can be peace between this group of people, frankly, are for them to be able to sit down and talk to each other mm -hmm. uh, and, and discuss how they're going to live together in, in peace and quiet. Okay, so one report alleges that the president um, is doing this or may do this as a result of uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's mm -hmm. um, selection of his committee, mm -hmm. where there are no moderate mm -hmm. representatives on the committee that would continue or vote to mm -hmm. continue discussions with the Palestinians? Well, I, I, I think that's a, a matter of opinion of whether there's no moderates within uh, the, okay. the Israeli cabinet, mm -hmm. just like uh, people would probably say there's no moderates within the United States cabinet. Uh, there are reasonable centrist people in both governments. Uh, it's just sometimes people on the extreme are the ones that get heard the most because they've got the loudest voice. Uh, the bottom line is what we're commanded to do is mm -hmm. pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Right. And I believe that it's our responsibility to stand with Israel. Uh, it's our responsibility to pray for the peace of Jerusalem and pray for the leadership uh, of, of not only the United Nations, but also the European Union, who also want to now get all of a sudden real involved in, in peace and in, in between uh, the Palestinians and, and the Israelis, uh, which if, if people... Uh, 
would only watch a little bit of news. <laughs> There's no fighting between the Palestinians and the Israelis. None. Right. Uh, but you just go a few miles down the road, yeah. and they got a very serious problem in Syria, in mm -hmm. Iraq, in Yemen, in Somalia, and a lot of other places uh, throughout the Middle East. Nobody's talking about that. Mm -hmm. and, and there's this misguided thought that somehow if, if there was a Palestinian state, all of this would go away. And it's absolute nonsense. Mm -hmm. Any uh, mention, I know the article doesn't mention it, but uh, when this is potentially going to take place? With the next, when's the next UN Security Council Supposedly meeting? sometime this year mm -hmm. uh, is what the article said. But mm -hmm. again, so many of these articles come out, you don't know for sure right. what's real or... Sometimes uh, a government will float a story just to see what the reaction what the public is. Reaction is yeah. uh, and if the reaction's positive, they'll do it. If the reaction's negative, they'll deny it ever came out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we have a command to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, which reminds me we want to check in now with Pastor Charles, who is over in Prayer Line, who often prays, oh, chapel actually, upstairs. We call it the upper room here in Lucie <laughs> Broadcasting. Hey, Pastor Charles, what do you have for us? Hey, good morning, Val. <laughs> Hey, hey, uh, we're doing a lot of things here, especially in the upper room, as we call it. We're getting pictures, Val. We're making sure that we get these people prayed for, all the ones who are calling us, emailing us, writing us on a regular basis. They're asking for prayer, prayer for not only themselves, their families, the loved ones, but also, like we've been talking about on the show so far, about Israel. Okay, so Pastor Charles, you just stay put. Stefan will join you a little later on in the show with those prayer requests. Just so many things, though, to pray for. But Pete, let me just ask you mm -hmm. this. For the person who's saying, um, you know, I'm going to play the devil's advocate. Mm -hmm. What's the big deal? Why can't Palestine, Palestinians have their own state? What say you? The Palestinians should have their own state. Mm -hmm. but they, should, they have to have it in peace with Israel. Uh, they have to have it through negotiations. And... Uh, a lot of times, especially uh, both in the Arabic media and the European media and sometimes the uh, left-leaning media here in the United States wants to blame totally Israel. Uh, there's a story out today that uh, uh, the government, U.S. government, is, okay. is pressuring uh, Israel to compromise and come to the table with the Palestinians. Well, where's the pressure on the Palestinians? Uh, Netanyahu, over the last week, there was a Jerusalem Day, which celebrates the 48th anniversary of Jerusalem being a, a united city. Mm -hmm. It was only divided for 19 years. Uh, and uh, so th that wasn't a long time for it to be divided. And now it's been united for 48 years. Uh, but nobody seems to be talking about uh, the Palestinians coming to the table with reasonable requests and, and demands. Uh, Netanyahu did upset the government over the weekend by proclaiming on Jerusalem Day, Jerusalem will never be a divided city. We're mm -hmm. not going back to a, a, a time when there's barbed wire and snipers all over the, the city of Jerusalem uh, because it's a divided city. And so there has to be a reasonable compromise. It should be done through people sitting down and talking and, and really listening to God, listening to mm -hmm. God's advice and direction. And I really believe there are godly people involved, and uh, I believe that God can speak to the hearts, and there can be a, a reasonable agreement between reasonable people. But again, people have to be reasonable, and the pressure needs to be applied equally on both sides. On both sides. Thank good. you. Well said. Thank you so much. That's why I always come to you <laughs> <laughs> when I want an update on all things Israel. Hey, you can join the conversation. Go and log on to Facebook and Twitter and send your email directly to the set of harvest at live at .com. The international news starts right now. Today is Wednesday, May 20th, 2015. I'm Bob Nagel, in for Chuck Freebie with this check on international news. Colombian residents in Salgar assessed the damage to their homes on Tuesday after a landslide destroyed much of the town a day earlier. Raging water from the Laboriana River made it nearly impossible for residents to cross from one part of town to the other. The toll of confirmed dead has risen now to 78, with as many as 100 others still listed as missing. The fear is that the death toll will top 100. Authorities said they were too busy sifting through debris looking for bodies and assisting survivors at makeshift shelters to give a more accurate estimate of the number of missing. 
The tragedy in Sagar appears to be the single deadliest event in the region since an earthquake in 1999 that killed hundreds. The rugged terrain near Sagar combined with poor building requirements has made this area one of the most disaster prone in all of Colombia. Thousands of passengers bound for Boston will spend a couple of days stuck aboard a Norwegian cruise ship after it ran aground while trying to leave a port in Bermuda. Small boats, divers, and tugboats circled the Norwegian dawn as officials tried to figure out how to solve the situation. An official with Bermuda's Rescue Coordination Center reported that the ship hit a reef while trying to maneuver through the north channel of Bermuda. The report says there are over 2,600 passengers on board, along with over 1,000 crew members. All are reported to be safe, and the report says the ship is in what is called a stable position. Well, a flotilla of Indonesian fishermen rescued more than 430 migrants who were stranded at sea and brought them ashore to safety in, on Wednesday. They are the latest victims of the humanitarian crisis confronting Southeast Asia. It was unclear if the migrants had all been on one boat or if they'd been rescued from smaller vessels. The initial batch was taken to a small village in an eastern province of Indonesia. Among the passengers were 26 women and 31 children. While the migrants, a 30-year-old man said they were hoping to find a Muslim country, either Malaysia or Indonesia. Both countries agreed on Tuesday to provide shelter for the migrants, at least temporarily. Thousands more are stranded at sea. Many are members of the Muslim minority in Myanmar and fear for their lives. The migrant numbers continue to grow. A Palestinian in a vehicle allegedly ran over two policemen in Jerusalem on Wednesday, according to police. The attack took place in a neighborhood in East Jerusalem. The police chief in Jerusalem said officers on the scene opened fire at the attacker and shot him dead. The two officers were slightly wounded and taken to a hospital for treatment. The initial investigation showed the vehicle arrived in the area from a northern direction. It appeared the attacker saw the policemen and veered toward them intentionally. As expected, the police took appropriate action. The investigation is continuing. And United States Marines and sailors on Tuesday were demonstrating to military leaders from around the Pacific how to land troops on beaches. Military officers from 23 nations were learning about developing amphibious skills at the inaugural U.S. Pacific Command Amphibious Leaders Symposium in Hawaii. They watched as U.S. Marines and sailors came ashore at Bellows Air Force Base. U.S. Treaty allies Japan and Philippines were among those in attendance, along with partners from Malaysia, Singapore, and Vietnam. The effort is to have troops from many nations be able to develop amphibious plans and be able to work together. And that is a check on international news. I'm Bob Nagel. Coming up later on Harvest, John Garrett talks about his newest album, Little Songs. But up next, Brian Bush updates us on ISIS advancing in Iraq. Harvest continues after this. We live in extreme times. A world in chaos with wars, famine, natural disasters, terrorism, and fear and hopelessness on every side. These extreme times call for the extreme love of Jesus, which is why La Cie Broadcasting exists, reaching into 190 countries around the world proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ. But we can't do that without your help, which is why your support today is so critical. Whatever gift you're able to give will help bring the gospel to a world in desperate need. To thank you for your support, we'd like to send you a copy of Dr. Summerall's classic book, Panorama of Prophecy. In this powerful book, you'll find answers to questions like, are these the last days? Will Christ soon return? And what are the signs of his coming? Perhaps you can give a gift of $190. That's $1 to help broadcast into each country we currently reach. Or even $1,900, which is $10 for every country we reach. Whatever you can give will bring the extreme love of Jesus into a world living in extreme times. So go to your phone and call the number on your screen, 1-800-365-3732, 1-800-365-3732. And when you call with your gift, make sure to request your copy of Panorama of Prophecy.
And as promised, we're going to catch up with Brian Bush, our correspondent in the Middle East, who is in Israel. And Brian, controversy there in Israel today over bus lines as we understand it. Tell us what happened. Um, back in October 2014, the Israeli Defense Force put into action a program to segregate Palestinians from Israelis on West Bank bus lines because it was said that the presence of Palestinians was a threat to the security of the Jewish settlers. This morning, when we all woke up, the headline was that the implementation banning Palestinians was in full effect. Well, hours later, after lawmakers in the Knesset saw what was going on, they cried foul. Um, there was across the political spectrum criticism of this program, some even calling it apartheid, others raising the question, is this an occupation or is this a democracy? So further fuel to the fire was the fact that it was perceived to uh, be harmful to Israel's image abroad, particularly in light of what Israel's Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu has been saying of recent. So in light of the criticism on the floor of the Knesset, this program has now been suspended. Hmm. Uh, Brian, turning now to the big news of the region, and that is that Ramadi has fallen to Islamic State. Uh, what's behind the IS strategy here? Because it doesn't seem like it's just a fight to take over another city. No, it's not. Um, there is a strategy here. Uh, there's more to it. Um, they are sending a message to Iraq, to the world, and particularly to the U.S., that they control Iraq's largest province, the Anbar province. Remember, Stefan, Islamic State came about largely because of poor governance, the Iraqi leadership that didn't deliver. Now, what's behind this is that it forces the fight against Islamic State to be on their own terms. Remember, the declaration of the Iraqi government was that Mosul was to be liberated by the summer. Well, that's not going to happen now. Iraq will need to retake Ramadi, uh, where the Iraqi soldiers just fled, and now they're inviting the Shia Iranian-backed militias to come and help them out. Um, they're going to need to usurp control over their largest province, Anbar province, something that they've been trying to do now for a little over a year. And Brian, you mentioned the Shia Ramadi is dominantly Sunni uh, in its ethnic makeup, and the militias are Shia, as you mentioned. So it doesn't look like it's going to create a good mix there, given the sectarian bloodshed that uh, we saw in Tikrit after the Shia Iranian militias took areas away from the IS there. Um, but there is possibly a flip side to this, my ever optimistic approach. Um, it may be a long shot, but um, the, the fact is the Sunni people of Ramadi, tens of thousands of which have fled, but the ones who are still there are asking for the Shia militia's help. This perhaps could signal some type of a shift or it provides a potential for cooperation between the Sunnis and the Shias. Much needed cooperation in light of the fact that the Iraqis are going to need to push Islamic State from its stronghold in the north, the city of Mosul. Mm. They're going to need to cooperate, Sunni and Shia, in order to do that. And that uh, could be proven to be a very difficult task. Brian, you and I were together not too long ago, just a few weeks back in Iraq, in the northern Kurdish-controlled area of Erbil, just about 20 miles from uh, the city of Mosul. What have you heard there from the Kurds or about the Kurds, uh, how they're viewing what's going on further south? Well, for them, Stefan, it's another feather in their cap, if you'd like to say it that way, to declaring independence. The actions over the recent days just reinforce the popular idea that the Iraqis are unable to govern unable to provide security and Islamic State is a force to be reckoned with. So they will use this to further justify shoring up their defense of their people and what they wish to see as a future Kurdish state. Mm. Uh, Brian, Brian, thank you so much. Always uh, appreciate the insights and we want to encourage our 
friends and viewers to like us on Facebook and go to Face Harvest Show Facebook page to get exclusive updates from Brian Bush's blog. Well, we're going to catch up with John Guerra in a little while to find out a little bit about the artist behind the music, but here he is performing nothing better from the new album, Little Songs. song in my heart you put the drum in my march and now i'm doing my part to tell the world what you did i was an old sinking ship you gave me sails in some wind and sent me sailing again all because you love me nothing better than you song in my soul you put the song in my soul you put the skip in my scroll and now i want them to know without you i was a mess no song no hope and no breath but when i heard what you said i rose right up from the dead hey god you love me nothing better than your love nothing better If you are among the thousands who love the teaching of Lester Sumrall, then you should have the two-volume set of The Treasury of Lester Sumrall. Written in Dr. Sumrall's easy-to-understand style, you'll feel like you are getting a Bible school education. There are 732 individual readings, one for each day for two whole years. These beautiful devotionals will also make a wonderful gift for your friends, family, or even your pastor. Order yours today. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. 
that we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Nepal earthquake victims need our help immediately. Feed the Hungry is providing critical food supplies to families suffering from the devastating 7.8 earthquake that has struck Nepal. The tragedy has caused widespread destruction in one of the world's poorest nations. The suffering is unimaginable, and we must respond now. We need your help now to purchase critical food and emergency supplies like rice, lentils, and blankets for thousands living and sleeping out in the cold. Please give generously and help us reach survivors in Nepal with compassion of Christ. They desperately need your help right now. Your gift of $60 will provide a month of food and emergency supplies to a surviving family in Nepal. $120 will give 10 survivors the life-saving aid they need. $600 empowers our local church partners in Nepal to help 50 earthquake victims who are struggling to survive. Thank you for helping us reach them today. Singer John Guerra has a heart for worship and his purpose as a songwriter is to create music that please, that's pleasing to God. But prior to becoming a worship artist, John wrote jingles for well-known companies such as Comcast, Chase Bank, and Allstate um, Insurance. And I'm just wondering if he will write a jingle for The Harvest Show. Welcome, uh, John. Thank you, Valerie. <laughs> nice to be here. Right here. Let's get a napkin. Put it on the back of a napkin. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you have some awesome music, but I was like, oh, my! it piqued my interest to know that you were a jingle writer. So how did you get into that work, line of work? Um, it was just... I don't know, how do you get into anything, I guess? Somebody yeah. introduces you to somebody, and then you make a good impression, cross mm -hmm. your fingers, and they call you back. Mm -hmm. That's kind of that. Um, but it was definitely, it was one of those jobs that you you really, it kind of f hones in and focuses on just kind of the melody and just having to get good at the facility of, of connecting with people in like an eight-second you only have eight seconds. You don't right. have four minutes to kind of get all poetic. And yeah. if you have eight, 15 <laughs> seconds, you have to grab people and hope that they want to buy, you know, yeah. the deodorant stick. Yeah, or right. Buy so, men. In. Yeah, totally. Uh, did, was this something that kind of uh, you saw early in your life? I mean, were, were jingles catching you or were little rhymes catching you or did things kind of come naturally and you kind of yeah. stitched words together? And I mean, from, so I, I started playing music and writing songs at, when I was 12. Mm -hmm. um, and it was just because I went on a missions trip with uh, my church. I was a super shy kid. My mom's like, this kid needs to make friends. Puts me on a missions trip for two <laughs> weeks for, with a bunch of strangers. I'm so glad she did. On that trip, I heard worship music and um, asked for the court sheets from my youth pastor, came home and started playing. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was all kind of church music for a long time. And then I started getting into bands. And honestly, jingles, it just, it was one of those things. It was a, it was a job and I needed a job and Mm -hmm. And I got good at it. That's what right. You so you do what you, I heard, I think it was Denzel Washington who said, you do what you have to do until you can do what you really want, want to do. That's right. Yeah. There you go. And I'd imagine you really love doing what you do now. Oh, so much. Um, tell Total us about gift. Little Songs. So Little Songs is my debut album. Came out about three weeks ago. And um, yeah, it's, it's titled after the very first song in the album called Every Little Song. Mm -hmm. And the lyrics pretty much sum it up. It says... And so receive my words, and so receive my songs. Um, they are my best, they are my first fruits. Until I see your face in heaven's great view, these little songs are what I have for you. Mm. Wow. So it's basically just the idea that um, my songs are an offering. God has given so much to me, so much to us. And so my songs are my best effort, my best poetry, my best music um, as an offering to him. And they're also an offering to those who might listen in, wherever they're at on their faith journey, whether they're new believers, old believers, flirting with the mm -hmm. faith, what, what have you, um, it, I think it's an, an encouraging thing to hear somebody processing, wrestling, um, and ultimately uh, praising God with their mm. songs. So. But something really happens when we do that, when we give our best back to God. He kind of mm. breathes on it. And mm. then 
And then as a result, you start going all over the nation, worshiping God and leading people into the presence um, yeah. with your music. Yeah. I mean, what has been the response? Um, surprising, su uh, surprisingly good. People have been very <laughs> gracious and, and generous. And uh, I, think, I think it's just, you know, sometimes I wonder, I don't know why God picked me to be able to do this. It, it really is a gift. It's mm -hmm. something that I'd always mm -hmm. dreamed of doing. And mm -hmm. I get to do it with my wife a lot. We travel together a ton. And uh, it's just amazing to see the very old but poignant message of, of God's love and transformation mm -hmm. and um, ultimate concern for human beings. It's amazing that that same message, just through a different channel, through a different mm -hmm. voice, really just continues to connect yeah. with people. Really, uh, when you just said those lyrics, it was really sweet. Uh, and what, I, what, what, it, what it struck me is like very much like childlike faith, and really mm. that's what, the way that the Lord expects us to come, you yeah. know, come as, as, a, as a child, you know. Yeah. If you're not more like one of these little ones, you can't enter the kingdom. And so totally, that, totally. that simplicity of expression. Yes, uh, yes. Make, just, just you quoting that made a connection with me. Oh, awesome. Uh, when awesome. it comes to the music, what are you hoping folks kind of take away from your, your debut yeah, album here. I mean, at the very least, I hope they enjoy the tunes. Mm -hmm. I mean, I hope it's a delight to listen to. Um, and, and then further than that, I think, I think delight is kind of God's superpower. Mm -hmm. Delight and awe are kind of the biggest <clears throat> doors through which people enter the kingdom because it's a species of joy. Mm -hmm. um, the scriptures say uh, the kingdom of God is like somebody who finds a treasure hidden in a field and in his joy goes and sells all he has to buy the field. So Love proceeds from joy, which I think is a species of delight. So hopefully people listen to this and are drawn to the message, drawn to God, drawn to this um, really this sense of, of, of love and hope and justice and, and transcendence that, that God calls us to. And, well, talk yeah. about some of the cuts, other cuts on the CD. So um, Every Little Song is the first album, and then my first singles is uh, called Nothing Better. Mm -hmm. And it's just a, a fun, joyful tune about kind of it's about that acute moment when you really believe like in in the heart of hearts, in your bones, that you're unconditionally loved. Not the kind of love that says do this, do that in your love, but the love that says I see you in your mess and I love you. That's so hard just for boom. us, to, though, as believers to grasp, Isn't even non-believers, you yeah. know. Um, oh, totally. It's hard for us to Because we live in such a meritocracy. America is so much of a meritocracy where do this, <laughs> do this, and you earn it, and you get it. and then That's right. And so you're only, um, you only get so much as, as you deserve. But that's not quite the gospel. The gospel is I see you when you don't deserve anything, and I give mm -hmm. you everything. Mm -hmm. and, and, and there's these moments, <clears throat> and I think we all experience it as believers. It, it's, it's such a tender and almost a fragile feeling that you get when you really believe that. And, and it's very exhilarating and it's, it's very joy. It's kind of like you just want to jump out of your skin like, I'm free, I don't have to prove myself anymore, I don't have to do this or that. So I wanted to capture that in a song and I feel like just kind of a fun, poppy, joyful, mm -hmm. I sing a lot of high notes. Mm -hmm. You're not singing that one today, are you? I did, yeah, I'm singing oh. that one today. Yeah. Oh, good, good, because mm -hmm. I was going to put a request in there. Okay. <laughs> it sounds really good, I don't want to hear that. Totally. Uh, what, uh, what were some of the influences or some of the people that influenced you uh, along the way? Um, so I... Like I said, I, when I was 12 years old, went on that missions trip, and so it was kind of a lot of worship songs. We were singing a lot of vineyard stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and then through that, just kind of the classic, starting with some of the classic youth group tunes, whether it be, um, you know, ska or punk rock and MXPX is kind of, and then in, in high school, I got really into um, kind of like Bob Dylan, 1960s folk music, and through college, it was sort of the first time I connected with um, understood that poetry could have such power. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't yeah. just about a cool tune that kind of got me hyped up before youth group. It was about, mm -hmm. man, this word, this lyric is saying something, and yes. it can burrow so deep into your heart. Yeah. So, man, that's good. I yeah. know you could. Are you sure you're not a bootleg preacher too, as well? <laughs> <laughs> because my I mean... <laughs> dad was a preacher. My dad is a preacher, so I learned from the best, I guess. That's right. I can hear it, but you don't sound preachy, does oh, he? Oh, great! I mean, you just you just sound amazing. There's but... so many preachers. Who wants to hear another preacher? <laughs> you just want to hear somebody talk. Um. I just wanted to ask you this other one quick question. I mean, you were a part of part of Vertical Church Band. So yeah. how difficult was it to just kind of go solo? Oh, man, it was not difficult at all, actually. They were so stinking supportive. I had written um, so many songs for Vertical, but a lot of them, because I was still getting used to the vernacular, weren't congregational worship songs. They were mm -hmm. more devotional worship songs. So okay. something somebody could listen to in their car in the morning and whatever. 
And um, the record label caught wind of these, and Vertical was like, we're so supportive of John, we want him to kind of pursue these. We think people need to hear these songs. Mm -hmm. The record label agreed, and wow, here that's I am. Good. And we agree, and so we're glad you decided to do that. To get a copy of John's project, go to johngaramusic.com or go to harvest-tv.com for a link to Little Songs. And still to come, John Garra performs Stained Glass from the, his new album, Little Songs. But up next in today's Connections, Pastor Mark Lance reveals the purpose and the power of the Holy Spirit. We'll be right back. Dr. Lester Sumrall was given a global vision to reach a million souls every day for Jesus Christ. To fulfill his God-given assignment, he established Lissy Broadcasting. The ministry today reaches millions of people in more than 190 nations through the power of television, radio, shortwave satellites, free Bibles, and prayer lines. But we need your help. Will you join Partners in Faith by giving a monthly gift of $25, $50, $100 or more? Give today by calling 1-800-365-3732 or visit Lissy.com. Are you tired yet have trouble sleeping? Wired yet can't focus? Let's face it, you only get one life. It's time to start living. It's time for a new you. Introducing the new you pack from Making Healthy Choices. This incredible package includes vitamin B12 with folic acid to promote focus and support cardiovascular health, vitamin D3 to build strong bones and muscles, vitamin E400, an all-natural antioxidant, and mineral concentrate, a fulvic acid trace mineral product essential for maximum cell function and performance. This exclusive offer is yours for the low price of $49.95 and shipping is free. You won't find these products in stores only by calling 1-800-965-2345 or by logging on to mhclife.com. It's time for a new you. It's time for life. Would you like to have a secure source of income for the rest of your life? What if that income was set and would never change no matter what the economy does? And at the same time, what if you knew you were changing lives for Jesus? That's right, it's a charitable gift annuity. The amazing part investment, part gift that never stops giving. The rates are much higher than savings accounts or certificates of deposit. It's the perfect way to honor God with your finances and fulfill the Great Commission. If you are over 49 and a half years old and you have at least $10,000, you may qualify. Call us at 1-866-224-2087 or go online to giftplanningatlessee.com. This hard to believe opportunity may not always be available, so call now while the rates of return are still high. Do it today, won't you? Well, we're centering our conversation this week around the question, who is the Holy Spirit? We really want to get a proper understanding of who He is and what He does. And the reason is, is because that will bring us a proper understanding of what He will do through us and in us. Now, yesterday we left off by telling you that the Holy Spirit is a person. And in order to perform all that He does, He must have the attributes of a person. And a person, of course, is defined by one who has a mind, one who has emotions, one who has a will. So we go to the Word and we see, first of all, that the Holy Spirit has a mind. Romans 8 and 27, the Bible said, He that searches the hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because He makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. The Holy Spirit will show you things in the supernatural realm that you otherwise would not know because he searches the deep things of God. Now, secondly, he also has a will. The Holy Spirit has the ability to make decisions. Look in Acts 13 and verse 2, where the Bible said they ministered to the Lord and fasted, and the Holy Ghost said, separate me Barnabas and Saul for the work whereunto I have called them. You know, if you're facing decisions right now, it's extremely important that you understand how the Holy Spirit will guide those decisions. He knows what lies ahead in your life. He's already been in your tomorrow. The third thing is the Holy Spirit has emotions. He reacts in a cognitive manner. 
Ephesians 4 and verse 30, the Bible says, Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed until the day of redemption. Now, why are these things important to me? Because when I understand who the Holy Spirit is and that he possesses the same characteristics that I do, that means my characteristics can be subject to his. My mind, I believe I can subject my thoughts to the mind of the Holy Spirit. I can begin to discern things in the Spirit that other people cannot understand because my mind is filled with His thoughts. My will, my decisions. I can make the right decisions in life when I come in line with the will of the Holy Spirit. Right now, the Holy Spirit is leading some of you to make some decisions that you don't have all the answers for, but He knows exactly what needs to happen. And if you will move in the realm of the Holy Spirit, your choices will lead you into the destiny God has prepared for you. Now, thirdly, your emotions. Sometimes unhealthy emotions try to attack us, anger and jealousy and maybe envy or bitterness. But when we subject our feelings to the emotions of the Holy Spirit, then we begin to act in the way that He does. Look in Galatians 5 and verse 22. You'll see that the fruit of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, is love and joy and peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. There's times we don't always feel like we want to forgive or have patience. But when we subject our feelings to the feelings of the Holy Spirit, then we will act in the way that He wants us to act. You know, when you travel to a city that you've never been to before, you don't know what restaurants to eat at, you don't, what, don't know what things to do and see, and you depend on a hotel's concierge, maybe to show you all the great stuff to do in that particular city. What I want you to do today is to start looking at the Holy Spirit as your spiritual concierge. He knows exactly where you need to go. He knows exactly how you're going to get from where you are to where you need to be. All you need to do is subject your mind, your will, your emotions to the mind, will, and emotions of the Holy Spirit. And if you will do that, you are guaranteed to experience the best life that you could ever live. Because the main purpose of why the Holy Spirit came is to come alongside of you. Jesus said in John 16 and 7, I tell you the truth. It's expedient. It's necessary for you that I go away. Because if I go not away, the comforter will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. The Greek word for comforter is parakletos, one who is summoned, called to one side, called to one's aid. My friend, this morning, when you get up, Every morning, the Holy Spirit is right by your side. He is right by you every time you get in the car. He has prevented car accidents. He is right by you every time you have to make a decision. I want you to start looking at the Holy Spirit as the one who will guide you, lead you, make you the person you need to be. Subject yourself to Him. He will give you the wisdom you need. And I believe revolutionize every decision you make. Today, know the Holy Spirit. He's right with you right now. Dr. Lester Summerall said that faith comes not by prayer, but by continually feeding on God's Word. Paul the Apostle wrote that faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Lacy Broadcasting's Partner in Faith make it possible for millions to hear the Word of God in over 190 countries, whether by television, shortwave radio, free Bible distribution, a 24-hour daily prayer line, souls hear the gospel. Will you join our fellowship of partners in faith? With every soul you reach for Jesus Christ, you're laying up treasure in heaven. We need your help to reach the lost for Jesus Christ. You can be a partner in faith for as little as a monthly gift of $25. Call 1-800-365-3732 and tell the prayer operator you want to be a partner in faith. Call today, 1-800-365-3732. Mullins 
Jesus said, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Do you have some treasures like silver and gold coins or old jewelry that you don't wear anymore? Why not invest them into changing lives for Jesus? Ask yourself if these treasures are really worth keeping. 
or should you invest them into making an eternal difference in someone's life? Call 1-800-365-3732 for a prepaid insured shipping envelope. Lay up your treasure in heaven. It'll be waiting for you when you get there. If you're like me, then you're always looking for that little something extra. Extra energy, better focus, more stamina. Well, what if I told you that there is hope for a new you? Well, it's true. With the new you pack from Making Healthy Choices. And the best part, it's only $49.95 and shipping is free. So call 1-800-965-2345 or log on to mhclife.com. It's time for a new you. It's time for life. Dr. Lester Sumrall was given a global vision to reach a million souls every day for Jesus Christ. To fulfill his God-given assignment, he began establishing the many outreaches of Lassie Broadcasting. Today, the ministry reaches millions of people in more than 190 nations through the power of television, radio, free Bibles, shortwave satellite, and prayer line. But we need your help to reach millions more. Will you join Partners in Faith and help us spread the gospel around the world? Will you commit to giving a monthly gift of $25, $50, $100 or more. Dr. Sumrall knew he couldn't fulfill his vision without the help of thousands of partners. But don't wait. Become a partner in faith today. Call 1-800-365-3732 or visit Lassie.com to give safe and secure online. The Bible says he who wins souls is wise. Make the wise choice today to become a partner in faith and help us win souls for Jesus. To have what scripture says is given by inspiration of God is a real treasure. And that's why we want to invite you to sign up for the treasury of Dr. Lester Sumrall. This free daily e-devotional draws from Dr. Sumrall's timeless writings and biblical insight on many issues confronting us today. Just go to lacy.com and click on the treasury sign up banner to receive the treasury of Dr. Lester Sumrall in your inbox every day. That's lesea.com. And as we say just about every day here on The Harvest Show, you can connect with our prayer line center four different ways. You can call 1-800-365-3732. It's toll free here in the U.S. If you're outside of the United States, you can dial directly by calling plus one five seven four two nine one ten ten. Prayer at Lassie.com is a great way to connect. You can email your prayer requests, praise reports, questions uh, to that email address. You can visit worldharvest.com where you can log in your prayer request and see the prayer requests of others and pray for someone else too. And then if you'd like to write 61300 Ironwood Road in South Bend, Indiana, 46614 is the zip code. I'm with Pastor Charles, Director of Prayer Line, up in our chapel today. And it looks a little different here, Pastor Charles. The walls need some filling. Yeah, they do. They do, Stephen. You know, what we did is we had pictures up here, Stephen, that was so old. And the majority of those ones who have sent those pictures, they sent them in, Stephen, that we might pray for them every time we come to this, what we call now the upper room. Yeah. When we come to the chapel up here, we come up here, we pray for them, we lay hands on the pictures, yeah. you know, and we pray for their requests. They request, they have requests that they send in along with their pictures. A lot of them were children. Mm -hmm. They wanted their children saved. A lot of them was parents. The kids would write in, send For us pictures parents. of their parents. Yep. Yeah, and their parents would go up on the wall and lo and behold, we get praise reports that parents, children, and the likes were being saved and wonderful. delivered and wonderful. healed. So now we've got all of those pictures stored yeah. and we're asking, friends, we're asking you, yeah. uh, when you call in, or sorry, when you write into Prayer Line or mm -hmm. even email into yeah, Prayer Line, email, yeah. you can send a photo attachment with that email, or you can send us a photo in the mail. And if it's a photo attachment, we'll get that printed out. We'll right. put it up on here. Mm -hmm. uh, Patty Ellis used to call this the the walls of love because uh, we want to we want to just pour out God's love upon those of you that make that effort and, and uh, give us that point of contact to put up on the chapel walls here. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, it's it's kind of refreshing to see all of these new. I, I was not around when he started the last time. Mm -hmm. I will imagine that's been going on since the 80s. Several years. Yeah, and like these walls well, are actually, filled. 
It was the mid to late 90s. Mid to late 90s? Mm -hmm. yep. Oh, wow. I tell you, there was a bunch of pictures up here. We still actually have the pictures. Right. But we know that their uh, requests have been fulfilled. Yep. And we're looking to get new ones up and going now. So It's a, it's a great point of contact. Mm -hmm. So when our volunteers or Pastor Charles or staff comes in to pray, you know, yeah. the Holy Spirit might just quicken someone on the wall. Absolutely. A photo, and we'll pray for you That's at, right. uh, at, at the, as the Spirit leads. And uh, we've got a few folks that have connected with us with prayer requests today we want to pray for. Absolutely. We, for instance, we have Jenny in Indiana. Jenny says, I have a friend that has lung cancer. I told him that I would be praying for him, so I called you all for help. Please agree with me for his healing. And then Judy in Texas says, I have been diagnosed with blood clots. She said, I'm asking God to heal me, and I'm asking you to be in agreement that they dissolve. And then Rita in Louisiana, Rita says that my father is in a lot of pain. He was diagnosed with stomach cancer. I need the prayer line to touch and agree with me that he will live and not die. Yeah, yeah. And then Dylan in Israel, Stefan, look at here. Dylan called in from Israel, and Dylan says, I have this pain and lump in my stomach. I'm not sure what it is or what's going on, but God knows. And he says, I believe prayer line can help me in the spirit of agreement, mm. and the Lord will heal me. All right. All right. We're going to pray. Let's yeah. pray. Yeah. And all these prayer requests here, they got just the, the note of faith, the sound yes. of faith in yes. them, asking for agreement. And Father, we thank you, Lord, that yes. by two or three agreeing on yes. heaven, yes. as touching and on earth as touching anything, touching. it is yes. done by you in heaven. In heaven. Yes. And so yes. now, Father, we agree oh, as touching yes. Jenny, yes. Judy, Rita, yes. Dylan, yes. Yes. Uh, those that are just watching, listening yes. right now, that yes. have their faith extended for divine healing. healing. Yes. We believe, God, that you, and know, we know, God, that you're bigger than cancer, mm. You're bigger than diabetes. You're bigger yes. than congestive heart failure. You are bigger right. than anything this world oh. can put up. You are almighty. And so, Father, we thank you now. And we yes. call forth healing, healing. in yes. the mighty name of Jesus as a Jesus. testimony to the mm. resurrection. Mm. Amen and amen. amen. Thank you for joining us on Harvest. We'll see you tomorrow. You know, it occurs to me that biblical words like vows and commitments and pledges have somehow lost their meaning in today's culture. But we expect God to keep His promises to us, so why shouldn't He expect us to keep ours? Keeping a promise isn't always easy. Sometimes it requires us to take bold steps of faith. Dr. Lester Sumrall said, when you walk in the faith realm, you must accept the Word of God or you won't make it. For example, God said, if you make a vow to the Lord your God, you shall not delay fulfilling it, for the Lord your God will surely require it of you, and you will be guilty of sin. And again, he said, when you vow a vow to God, do not delay paying it. It is better you should not vow than that you should vow and not pay. God will always honor his promises to you. Remember to always honor your promises to him. Critical news is happening in the Middle East 24-7, and I am living in the middle of it all, right here in Jerusalem. Correspondent Brian Bush brings you a front row seat to major events unfolding in the Middle East. Brian knows the people and the land, keeping you abreast of the news with expert analysis from a Christian perspective. Watch my Israel Up to the Minute reports on The Harvest Show right here, only on this Lissy Broadcasting Station. The Harvest Show is produced by LaCie Broadcasting and is viewer supported by people just like you. Thank you for inviting us into your home today.